So that is um, Brett Kick Nate. That's my Brett Kick Nate. So yeah, it's got some floaties in there. Whatever. These bread beers, man, they uh, they're always always something in suspension. But um, and that right there is a uh, Tyler um, Everson Everty Homebrew sent me a glass. Everty Homebrew. Oh, he really does care. So anyway, let's turn this around. Pretty good stuff. I like it. Uh, under five percent too. So yeah, it's good stuff. All right, tonight is Tuesday night, so tomorrow is Homebrew Wednesday. Wednesday. All right, enough of that. Um, look at that. Homebrew in a can. Homebrew in a can. Tyler um, sent me all of his hop experiment beers. Um, they were all canned, um, and these three are all um, experimental type beers that he's done, and they're all carbonated in the can. So, how cool is that? And I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I got a beer sitting in there. Well, I got some yeast making a beer in there for me. Um, so yeah, then you got all this. One, two, three, four, five, six boxes. Um, so yeah, everything's kind of coming around. Coming around. Oh, what is that, you might ask? I'll tell you here in a second. Let's go ahead and get uh, turned around. We'll see. So this is vanilla bean. Um, I've got it sitting in some vodka. And what... I was thinking I was gonna put it in a small like Tupperware container about so long about that deep um, but um, he's so much vodka to cover it up and um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to pitch both the vanilla bean and the vodka or just pull the vanilla bean out of the vodka so what I did the light bulb went off up here and I said hey if I put that in a bag I can that's only maybe maybe two tablespoons of vodka in there and roll it up like that um, then it will be covered in vodka um, sterilizing it and I can just pitch the whole damn thing and I'll never know that there's vodka in there so and so what am I needing that for so yesterday today's Tuesday yesterday being Monday I had my fucking weekend was busy um, Saturday and Sunday both were just busy so I went ahead got um, some time I need to take off before the end of the year um, so I took one of those days yesterday and I brewed I brewed and um, well let's get the brew first I brewed it's a milkshake IPA so I think it was six and a half pounds of two row a pound of 40 um, then let's see here I had a pound of flaked wheat. Um, I had a box of grape nuts, which is, which is a pound and four ounces. Then a, then a tube of um, quick oats, which is two pounds, 10 ounces. And um, yeah, so I had about just under five pounds of uh, cereal, flaked, whatever you want to call it, um, in there. And I put a pound of rice hulls in there just because and uh, no stuck runoff no um, stuck sparge so that was awesome um see original gravity was 1062 that's with a pound three ounces of lactose so it's not going to be a big beer if whatever beer smith kid does not the kid well beer smith cannot calculate um terminal gravity of a recipe with lactose in it unless I'm missing something but it, it calculates it as um, fermentable sugars which it's not right so anyway I went ahead and I mashed I mashed low I mashed 148 um, for 60 minutes and um, 
I pitched 644, WLP 644, which is not a great attenuator. Um, it's not a great flocculator, so that's that's fine. So I went ahead and I pitched low. Since I've got a pound and three ounces of um, lactose, I went ahead and that's why I mashed low, so I can dry it out as much as I can because it's it, I don't want a beer that starts at 1060 that ends at 1030, right? So <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Um, hop schedule is pretty simple. Um, it was um, a little over, and it was just under an ounce of Galena at 60. Um, then at 15 minutes, I had two ounces of Ron Mexico and two ounces of um, Amarillo. Then at uh, Whirlpool, I had an uh, additional two ounces of Ron Mexico and two ounces of uh, Amarillo. So four ounces of Whirlpool. Um, so yeah, then... Let's see, Thursday evening, I think I'll dry hop it um, for the first time, so I should still have high carousing. That'll be roughly three days, so I should have high carousing. Um, I'll do that. That'll be, I think I'm going to do Citra, um, Zaka, more Ron, maybe. Then um, I think at that point I'm going to go ahead and add my six pounds of uh, peaches and the vanilla bean. Then I let it sit uh, for a week. I'll taste it, and if I if it tastes is fine, I'm gonna rack it the secondary and dry hop it again. Um, but if the vanilla isn't overwhelming and the peach isn't quite where I want it, I'll leave it sit for another week. But I will dry hop it again. <laughs> Just excuse me. Um, I'll do the whole fermentation process in one bucket. And um, so that'll give me uh, a little over two weeks in the keg. So I mean, in the in the um, fermenter, I may wait till three weeks. It just depends on. I'll taste it and see what happens. So then I'll get my uh, keg out and I'll uh, keg that some bitch, right? So that's what I've been up to. Um, I did clean a keg. I went ahead and I cleaned my um, my beer lines and my keyser. Why? I don't know. Just for shits and giggles, right? Um, I really don't have much of anything going on. Ah, let me go. Let me go get something. So, you guys know what that is. Uh, Canadian breakfast stout. Better be good because this was expensive. So I get them brewing, strolling through my uh, Twitter <clears throat> in um, local store, bottle shop. Um, just put out on their Twitter feed that they've got their shipment of uh, CBS. Um, it's first come, first serve, one per customer no holds um this is about about two o'clock when they put it out so i just got done brewing just got done just sat down um started drinking a beer i hadn't had a beer all day uh just started drinking a beer so i read that got a real quick shower got out and bought one would i have gotten one if i'd been working yesterday not at all but do i need it fuck no i don't need that fucking beer but anyway, don't need it, but, you know, sometimes you just got to go get those beers. Um, we'll see how it happens. I'm not really a whale chaser. Not so much. But anyway, I got that. Um, I wired up a couple outlets in my basement here. It's pretty exciting stuff, right? So, hopefully I get all my Hop Experiment beers shipped to me. Um, probably this week. I'm missing just a handful of guys. Um, a handful of guys still gotta pay me. Because if you guys ever gonna hub anything like this, um, what we always do, um, all the participants will ship to a hub. This time being me, um, I give them my PayPal information and they send me enough money to ship their box back to them which is going to be 
roughly about the same amount of beer, same amount of money, right? So the weight's going to be similar. Um, so then I keep, if there's any left, then that, that's my money, which it shouldn't be much, maybe a dollar or two each. <clears throat> but anyway, and um, but that's an easy way to do it. You know, there's no no money out of my pocket other than uh, gas money and whatever. Um, everything's fair. So, anyway, just a word of advice. All right. Um, I got to bottle my hop experiment beers. I have yet to do that. But, anyway, that's all I got right now. That's it. So, uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah, mister. Okay. So I got mouth. Badass. This fucking glass is tits. Like C cups. Not too big, not too small. Pow! Cheer! Um, mashing. I got about, let's see, just 10 minutes into the mash. Um, temperature dropped on me quite a bit. It dropped down to 130. Had to strike water at 165. Um, but being a December morning in southern Ohio, um, I guess my brain's cooled down a lot faster than I anticipated. But anyway, got my temperature up 148. Um, so here we go. Uh, this is a peach uh, milkshake IPA. Um, right now I've just got just under five pounds of uh, either flaked uh, wheat, uh, oats, or um, grape nut cereal in there. So it's all. Uh, a lot of my mash. I think we only got, I got seven and a half pounds of um, traditional uh, grains being too early in my crystal 40. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of mash. I do have a pound of rice hulls in here and I went ahead and, and I, uh, I put an extra gallon of um, mash water in there just to thin things out, try to prevent any stuck mash. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Maybe a little bit more video. Late. All right, starting my sparge. I fly sparge, so um, I'm running the uh, sparge water through through my right pump, that's the clean pump, through the um, rooms tube and um, into a colander, and it's just you know, running, trickling through. So then it comes out at the bottom of the mash tun into my dirty pump. And to uh, another valves, I can control the flow. I control the flows by the top two valves, and that goes into my uh, hop screen just to collect all the malts and all whatnots that uh, makes it through. All right, guys. That's There's my new tumblers, uh, 15 ounce uh, glasses, whatever, whatever you want to call them. But um, yeah, go ahead and weigh out all my hops, my water additions, all that stuff, and uh, put some uh, cling wrap on top of them, and uh, bam, Bob's your own. I'm cooling it down for the Whirlpool. Um, it's 191 there. It's uh, 86, but I got the I got it running pretty pretty uh, slow through there. So anyway, um, I'm gonna probably open that up a little bit more and try to equalize that. And uh, Whirlpool for I think about 20 minutes. It's uh, two ounces of raw Mexico and two ounces of um, Amarillo.